The six green squares you see on the screen are known in cellular automata as cells. In Conway's Game of Life, uh, the most well-known cellular automaton, those, in this case, green cells, are referred to as live or alive cells, living cells, on cells. The rest of the cells on the screen, which you can't see right now, are off cells, or you might call them dead cells. If you watch the little square going across the screen here that I'm pointing at, you can see that there are many such cells. This is a live cell. This is a dead cell. Or another way of putting it, this is an on cell. This is an off cell. Now, these cells have to follow certain rules in a cellular automata, particularly in the game of Conway's game, in the cellular automaton known as Conway's Game of Life. Uh, it has a very simple set of rules, which I'll explain in a moment. But first, I want to show you what happens when I run this universe through a few cycles, uh, specifically five cycles. Starting here, one cycle of time, we end up with this. One more, this. A third one, we end up with this. A fourth one, we get this. And in the fifth one, everything's gone. Now, let's, let's look at how that works. This cell here is a dead cell. If I give it three neighbor cells that are alive, say, for example, one here, one here, and one up here, then in the next generation, this cell becomes alive. Now notice the cell up here remained alive. Well, why is that? Let's look again at that configuration. This cell dead, and around it, this cell, this cell, and this cell alive. Well, notice this cell up here has two live neighbors, one diagonally from it this way and one diagonally from it this way. The neighborhood in Conway's Game of Life has a total of eight possible neighbors. Well, if you have two neighbors that are turned on or alive in one generation, that cell stays the same as it was in the next generation. If there are three cells that are alive around a particular cell, in the next generation, that cell will be alive also, whether it was or not the generation before. Any other condition, the cell will be dead in the next generation. So for example, this cell here has two live neighbors, so it'll stay as it is, turned off. This cell here has two live neighbors, so it'll stay as it is, turned off. This cell has one live neighbor. It'll basically die of loneliness. This cell here also has one live neighbor. Same condition. This cell has two live neighbors. It'll stay alive. This cell has three live neighbors. It'll become alive. So I cycle one generation, and we end up with a new cell born here, and this cell up here got a little bit older. Now, if I give this new cell here three neighbors, notice it already has a neighbor up there. So that, that makes a total of four. Now, down below those three I just added, there's another cell that also has three neighbors, but it doesn't have a fourth one. So that one meets the condition to become a live cell in the next generation. But this cell now will die of overcrowding. Going one generation into the future, you can see what I mean. That, that cell here will die of overcrowding, and the cell here will die of loneliness. One generation, I get that. Another generation, I get that. Another, I get that. Another, I get that. Now notice from very simple beginnings... Generation after generation, 
I get something rather complex. But there comes a point where the complexity has come to an end. And all we get is a repetition. Now that's not always the case. There are a few ways that something like this can end, depending on the pattern you start with. And it's always depending on the pattern you start with. This is what's called a zero player game. You set up the game, the game plays itself. There are no players. In this particular case, we ended up with a repeating pattern. In this case, it repeats every two generations. It is possible to get a pattern that repeats more than every two generations. It's also possible to end up with a pattern that ends up with nothing left, as was demonstrated in the first example I gave. And if I remove this one live cell here, those two cells will die off. And in the next generation, we are left with this. Notice that if I take out these three as well, again, the remaining cells will all die of loneliness in the next generation, and we're left with nothing. If I make a small line of three cells, in this case, a horizontal line, above those three cells, we have a cell that's not alive yet, but will be in the next generation because it has three live neighbors. Below those three cells, we have a cell that's not alive yet, but it will be in the next generation because it has three neighbors. However, the cells on the two ends of that horizontal line will die of loneliness. The one in the middle has two neighbors, so it'll get left the way it is. And you'll notice it getting a, a little bit older. Now, not all uh, implementations of Conway's Game of Life show aging. The, the aging doesn't really affect the rules. It's just a way of being able to visually recognize when a cell's already been there for a while as opposed to a new one. In this case, the new cells are green. And if I go one generation into the future, you can see that middle cell has aged a little. Another generation into the future, and you can see it, it has aged a bit more. Another generation into the future, and again, you can see it's aged a bit more. If I continue into the future, you can see now it's not showing any more signs of aging. That's as far as this particular implementation goes in demonstrating or, or visually showing that the cell is getting older. Beyond that, it just shows that's an old cell. The other cells, on the other hand, continue to stay green because they're actually new cells. So it's not the cells on the top and bottom moving to the left and right. It's rather the cells on the top and bottom going away and the cells on the left and right being born. Now, with that in mind, let's try something else. Here we are again with the same pattern I started with originally. This time shrunken down a little and there's a reason why I did that but um, I'm not going to explain it just now you'll see in a while but again I'm going to go through the same five steps uh, this time I'm not going to go through them slowly I'm just going to let this pattern of six dots go through the five steps okay starting now and all those dots are gone now, moving over here, um, this is, I have several tabs open, and so this is another tab that's open. Notice this is the same six dots, plus one in the upper left. Here's the same six dots, plus one dot, a little bit farther to the right. And again, the same six dots, plus one. The same six plus one, same six plus one, same six plus one, the same six plus one, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Some of these are taking a little bit, a little bit of time to load, 
but as you can see, it's the same six dots plus one in each case. So seven dots. And this is just cycling through the different uh, arrangements of seven dots back to the first one that I showed you. So here we are with seven dots. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run, uh, run these different arrangements of dots to show you what difference can be made by a single dot being added to that original six. Now... Bear with me here, because you might not realize that there's really anything obviously changed right away. Okay, starting this one. Oh, again, <laughs> I'm going to have to um, click on something to make that work and try that again. Okay, and that's all that does. The next one, uh, again... It's giving me a, a little trouble and okay starting this one you might notice that's a little different okay the next configuration again starting this one and the next configuration again starting this one Now you might notice this one's running a little longer. Again, it's only one change of uh, one dot changed, one extra dot added to the original six. And here we end up in a blinking pattern, but it took a while to get there. So if anybody tries to tell you that uh, you can't get something more complex than what caused an event more complex than what caused that event, tell them to think again. Because obviously you can. In this case, just one addition of a dot made that much difference. Okay, so moving on to the next pattern. And again, starting now. And that one went very quickly to a repeating pattern. Moving on to the next one. Again, starting now. And there, this time, oh, now this is a, a state I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, it hasn't completely cleared them all out, but it's also not changing anymore. Uh, notice we've just ran into some cells that just sit there. So that's another possibility. Moving on to the next one. Again, seven dots. Okay, starting now. And as you can see, this one runs for a while and again ends up in a pattern that uh, is what, what they call a still life. It doesn't move. Moving on to the next one. Again, seven dots. Starting now. And that one ended. Moving on to the next pattern. Starting now. And you can see that one went away rather quickly. Moving on to the next pattern. Starting now. Now you might be thinking, okay, so they're all pretty much alike. But are they always going to be? Remember, at least one of them ran quite a bit longer than the other ones. Moving on to the next pattern. Starting now.
And you can see this one's running quite a bit longer. And it ends in a still life. One more pattern of seven dots. Starting now. Now here's the thing. You could work it out exactly how this is going to turn out. What the end state will be. If there is an end state. It could go on changing and changing forever. Depending on how you started it. But. There's nothing intuitive about it to the human mind. Again, one dot added is all it took. That one dot makes this big of a difference. Now will this one end? Will it eventually be a still life? Will it eventually be alternating between two or more states? I don't actually know. I haven't ran this one yet. This is my first time running this particular configuration. So I'm finding out as I watch it just like you are. Unless you've actually done this one before. Uh, considering the number of possibilities there are, I'd say that's unlikely, but could be the case. So just how long will this one run? I don't know the answer. But I'm going to let it run for a while at least, because apparently it's, it's taking its time ending. And I have one more pattern to go when this one's done. Now, the, the last one that I have waiting to go, I know it's going to run for a while. I don't think it's actually quite as long as this one. Um, but it does it does eventually end in uh, alternations, in, in uh, flashers. And uh, it's, it's actually, again, the same six dots we started with plus one. But it's a rather well-known pattern called Acorn. And uh, you can find it at conwaylife.appspot.com slash pattern slash acorn. If you want to run this particular implementation of Conway's Game of Life yourself with that pattern. And see for yourself how it looks. Again, I don't know how long this one's going to run. It doesn't look like much longer. Mm, there we go. So we're left with one blinker or flasher and a bunch of still life. All right. Moving on to the last one I have prepared here. Hold on. There, pause that. Moving on to the last one. Now, this is the pattern, as I mentioned, known as Acorn. And starting now. Again, it's just a pattern of seven dots. A very simple beginning with very simple rules. I'll go over the rules again while this is running. Any cell that has exactly two neighbors alive gets left the way it is in the next generation. Any cell that has exactly three neighbors will be alive in the next generation. Any cell with any other number of alive neighbors will be turned off in the next generation. Another Again, uh, Two stays the same. Three becomes alive. Any other number becomes dead. Or in other words, uh, another way of wording it, uh, 
two live neighbors, it gets left on or off, whichever way it is. Three live neighbors, it gets turned on. Any other number of live neighbors, it gets turned off. Now, there are other ways that you can word these rules, but mathematically, this is the way they have to work out. Because otherwise, it's not Conway's game of life. It's some other cellular automaton. Now, you might notice uh, <clears throat> the patterns kind of went off the bottom of the screen a little bit there. And that, that can affect how it ends up, how the pattern ends up in the end. Uh, because it's actually gone off the uh, off the computational area. So um, that, that can mess up the computations. Ideally, uh, Conway's Game of Life should run on an infinite-sized board. Or, in other words, on an infinite-sized uh, cellular automaton universe. But, of course, uh, computers have limited processing power. And so an infinite-sized board is not something that's practical to calculate on a computer. But long before these were done on computers, they were done on checkerboards or, and uh, go boards and chess boards uh, with, um, with checkers or rocks or whatever the people happen to have handy. And uh, mathematicians, math students, and, and such would uh, try out different patterns and go through the calculations one at a time, literally generation after generation, figuring out uh, each cell, whether it would be alive or not alive in the next generation. And, uh, well, I guess this one is running longer than, than uh, the one before it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the exact number of generations. And again, it depends on the size board you have. Uh, this board wasn't quite big enough to hold the entire pattern, so that makes a difference. Um, again, I, I do believe this is going to end in some still lifes and uh, some flashers. Or blinkers. Um, but there are all kinds of patterns that can happen. One of the very um, well-known patterns in Conway's Game of Life is something that's called a glider. And you'll find the glider also in a lot of similar rules uh, for a square grid cellular automaton with eight neighbors per cell. It's a, it's a rather common configuration. What the glider does is it actually sort of walks across the screen. You might call it emergent life, which is one of the reasons actually why Conway's Game of Life is called Life. It was originally named Life by its inventor, John Horton Conway. So, again... Um, this is this has been the uh, demonstration I wanted to make uh, for um, emergent complexity. I hope it wasn't too terribly long and boring for anybody watching it. And I'm just kind of waiting for it to finish this, and then I'll end the video. Looks like it kind of doesn't want to end. And again, I, I, I want to stress that it's not really easy for a human being to look at a pattern like this and be able to say, well, okay, uh, in, you know, say 100 generations, that'll be stopped. Or in 10 generations, that'll be stopped. Or, you know, this, this one will last for 1,000 generations. It's just not an easy thing to do. And yet... It is predetermined because the rules are very specific. The only thing that makes it, the only thing that decides how long the pattern is going to last and how it's going to evolve is how it started. And yes, this is evolution. For anyone who thinks there's no such thing as evolution, here it is. It's an evolving pattern. It's not 
evolving biological life, but in a sense it is evolving life. Although notice the, the, the blinkers aren't evolving, they're just blinking. And oh, there's a right over here, um, that is a glider. And now that glider isn't going to evolve into, say, a spaceship or something. Um, yes, there are actually things they call spaceships in Conway's Game of Life. But the glider won't evolve into one. It just stays a glider. However, if it bumps into something else, it will start a chain reaction with whatever it bumped into, which could end in nothing or could end in something much more complex. And again, it's kind of hard to predict in advance for a human. Uh, there isn't really a, a simple calculation to figure it out in advance either. There's no mathematical formula known to be able to, to work these things out in advance. The only thing we're really able to do is either look in a list, if we've got a list of, you know, this, this does this and that does that, uh, look it up in a list, and uh, if we find it, we can say, okay, this is what the list says, or just try it. Let it run. And I thought this would be done by now. Um, <laughs> I figured with the, the small board I'm running this on that it would have quit by now. But no, it's still going. So how long is this going to run? Again, I don't know. And it's okay to say you don't know. A lot of people don't want to do that. You know, they want to say, oh, you know, um, this is the answer uh, because a book told me or because, you know, somebody else said they knew or whatever the case might be. Well, if it's true, it's true. That's fine. But if it's not, then saying you know is lying. In this case, I don't know. And I'm not afraid to say I don't know. Now, I could have run this in advance. I could have checked to see how many generations it would go. Maybe, you know, maybe I would have given up after a million generations or whatever. I don't know if it'll go that far. Maybe it will. I don't think I'll run the video that long. I don't, I don't think I'll leave it record that long because, uh, well, that would be a really long time to wait. But... It might, if I left it go that long. Again, um, if you want to try this for yourself and see, if you want to let it run all night, if that's what it takes, and see if it ever ends up uh, with a blank screen or with a bunch of still life or whatever the case might be and nothing else, uh, go to conwaylife.appspot.com dot com slash pattern slash acorn that's not my web page um somebody else made it i'm not sure who exactly but that information should be on the website and if i remember to i'll i'll put a link to it in the description of this video uh, to make it a little easier to find so you don't have to type it in i guess i'll just let this run run for a while and uh Shut up and stop talking for a bit. See if it quits.
Yep, I really thought this would be done by now. There are some things the human brain isn't real good at. This is one of them. And I understand people, you know, who, who think that, uh, you know, simple beginnings can't have complicated results, that, that a simple event um, can't cause a complex process, that complexity can't come from simplicity. I understand that because it's not real intuitive. But here it is. Simple rules, simple addition of one dot to a six dot pattern, and this thing's still going. It's still evolving. It hasn't gone extinct yet. It hasn't gone stagnant yet. Oh, I think it's going to. There it is. It finally did. So there we go. I managed to uh, let it run to the end of its... Uh, well, productive life, I guess you might say. I hope anybody watching this has found it sufficiently interesting. Um, if not, sorry about that. Uh, but for those who are interested in uh, this particular idea, uh, just run a search on the internet for emergent complexity and see what you find. Or run a search for cellular automata and see what you find. Uh, maybe you run a search on YouTube for Conway's Game of Life and see what you find. Uh, there's, a, there's a generalized version of a, gen, a generalized cellular automata, uh, automaton based on Conway's Game of Life um, that's called Smooth Life that has... Um, Instead of discrete cells, it, it actually has uh, what you might call fuzzy cells. Um, and again, the the calculations are, are still very exact. It's still mathematical. It's still predictable in in a in the sense of if you know how it started and you've ran it before, then you know how it's going to end up. But it's not predictable in the sense that if you haven't run it before, you can look at how it started and know regardless of how it's starting. Now, obviously, in the case of Conway's Game of Life, if you started with one of these uh, squares of four cells, it's just going to stay that way. If you started with any of these other still lifes, it's just going to stay that way. If you start with a line of three dots. It's going to flip back and forth between vertical and horizontal. This is just how it works. But if you start with something more complex, maybe not. If I drop a dot in here somewhere, let's see what happens. Just one dot added. And again, some complexity starts coming out of it. Will that die off right away? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not going to leave it to find out. Take care, and thanks for watching.